So we're going to start off by um, doing a information plus algorithm equals insight. Absolutely. Uh, we've set up a car sharing company called Drive, and you have three scenarios. Scenario one is targeted marketing. Scenario two is uh, 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 demand and utilization. And scenario three is proactive maintenance. Correct. All right. So exactly. this is where I get to step back and... Uh, <laughs> Show us Magellan. All right. <laughs> we're excited to show everybody Magellan today. It is real, and we're bringing it to life. We're, as Mark said, talking about it and seeing it live right here. So as he mentioned, I'm uh, assuming the role now of a marketing analyst at Drive Corporation. So we're a car share company with global operations in all major cities, including Toronto. And in this scenario, I'll showcase first campaign optimization. So we use Magellan to, in fact, uh, work with our customer data coming from uh, XECM for Salesforce and coming from Xtreme uh, from Experience Suite. And we also have some other partner technologies like Covacent. So we'll show several scenarios here, but I'll start with campaign. So, so easy to bring in multiple sources of information. Absolutely. That's a specialty, it, in it's fact. Built, it's built to talk to multiple sources. Exactly. And the more complex those sources are, the better we will actually do. So we'll start off by looking through the eyes again of a marketing analyst, and I've created on our intranet um, a dashboard for our field marketing folks that allows them to kind of identify target demographics and micro segments. However, this dashboard, uh, while it's helpful, it's rear view mirror in nature. It's looking at history. What we really need to do to market more effectively is to understand future customer behavior, likely outcomes. So with that actually also comes the sophistication and need for data science. We're going to need an algorithm, some machine learning to help us with that. So I'm going to actually use AI created by our data science scientist in our data discovery tool for Magellan. So this actually turns the data science into drag and drop affair. So in this particular case, we've uh, leveraged an algorithm that's called a Gaussian naive Bayes algorithm that I've been able to, it's been shared with me and I can apply my own customer data from it. So in this case, I've been able to apply that algorithm and it's, a, it, it's actually a clustering algorithm that will determine a propensity for one thing or another to happen. So we've been able to identify, in this case, customers who are most likely to be a frequent user, customers who are most likely to purchase a premium plan, and customers most likely to respond to a campaign. So those are three very accurate predictions, sure. but let's actually get even more accurate by combining these. So I'm going to build a visual depiction of the intersection of these three predictions. Yep. Drag and drop AI. And that was live and very quick. Exactly. So again, the immensity of data here, millions or billions of rows. Yep. So now we see in the center, there's our ideal target demographic. And any of these visuals also yeah. are interactive, that we can just simply click and isolate this segment of information. Yeah. This was roughly a half million rows, if I'm adding the number up. That's right. right? That exactly. you're just able to simply drag and drop. Drag and drop and yeah. lickety split, we get these, yeah. these uh, insights. The campaign data is actually slightly larger. The customer data is about okay. half a million rows. So the next thing we want to do, when, now that we've identified this segment, is learn more about them, kind of their DNA or their makeup. So for this, I can kind of extend on the machine learning and the AI. Now I'm applying a Z-score algorithm by simply dragging in our segment and evaluating against different So we created uh, this new data set, and we applied another algorithm to it. That's yep. correct. Yep. Exactly. So what we can actually see here is, you know, for the non-statistician visually depicted. So this is telling us anything pointed from the center out to the right is uh, indicative of statistically relevant finding. So we can see that our ideal target demographic has either a micro plan or advanced plan with our company. Uh, they average, or they're averaging between 30 and 45 years of age. They also uh, drive between uh, 10 and 20 times per month on average and go about uh, between 100 and 200 miles and so on. So this helps to really fine tune our marketing yeah. efforts. We know exactly who to go for. And this is powerful. This is whether you, you, you're in uh, retail, any consumer market, yeah, absolutely. and you want to keep focusing and focusing and focusing through these big data sets, apply an algorithm uh, to, to raise your, your, your likelihood of that target. Exactly. It's yep. progressive insight, if you will. You can get more and more fine-tuned. Once we're at an area where we actually want to now share this insight with our operational user, our field marketers, yep. we can simply now put it into their hands. So I can publish this visualization 
And we'll go back into our dashboard through the eyes now of a field marketer. It's turned into a drag and drop affair again. I just simply pull on that customer profile. And now we can actually see and have go. this inform yep. our, our operational users who are spared having to understand the science behind all of this technology. So that's a way in which we utilize Magellan for campaign optimization. And again, it's information plus algorithm yeah. equals insight. And that's our first scenario, targeted marketing. Yep. Correct. All right. And our second uh, scenario is now we're going to go to some demand. Demand. And, yep. and this one is actually quite interesting because we're using multiple disparate data sources. So not only data that's coming from internal systems, but also external data from weather and other sources. OK. Exactly. So now we're looking at predictive utilization. Because with successful campaigns, we're going to have uh, more demand. So we need to be able to meet that demand. We don't want dissatisfied customers. So now I'm looking through the eyes of the fleet manager. Okay. And we're utilizing, in this case, an algorithm called triple exponential smoothing. Again, prepared by our data scientist. And it's evaluating on any of our stations, in this case around Toronto, it gives us a prediction. So we, we just, you know, visually we have a, a map of Toronto. These are where our, um, our, our, our stations. pickup stations, pick pick stations exactly. are. Uh, we've just run a campaign, and now we're going to other data sources to say, well, do we have enough uh, um, fulfillment? Or, exactly. Right, to, to, to meet that demand. Because it would be terrible to have a campaign and then people show up and no cars and there's are no there. cars, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So in order to help uh, with that demand, we are utilizing, again, this triple exponential smoothing to make predictions about future usage. So we see it here. But in this scenario, let's, uh, let's actually add to this. We know that unexpected changes in weather can actually dramatically impact especially utilization, in Toronto. especially in Toronto. So let's ask our data scientists to help out with that by factoring in weather forecast information so that we can make this prediction much more accurate. So at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, I've been talking a lot about our data scientist and how that data scientist has prepared for us these drag and drop bits of AI, if you will. And the way that happens in Magellan is to utilize the Magellan notebook, and this is a note. So a note is, in fact, a favorite environment for a data scientist. Yep. As you mentioned, it allows for a data scientist to program in their favorite language, Scala, Java, R, Python. Yeah. In this case, we're utilizing Python. Yeah. And this is important because we decided we want to be able to open this notebook to data scientists through standard languages, Python, Scala, R, versus having to buy IBM Global Services. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So when we write these algorithms, also our customers maintain the IP and the ownership of this. Yep. And this can be a huge competitive advantage. That's the second advantage. key point because we actually think our customers know basically their data and algorithms they want to apply. They've been Correct. doing it mentally or in Excel Correct. through many years. That's because right. Because part of data science is not only knowing the algorithms, but knowing the business, because the business will actually change the, yep. change the algorithm based on what they need. Right. So we're, 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 in a lot of ways, democratizing this, because we want to hand it back to our customers. That's right. Well put. So we won't go through this in excruciating detail, but I just want to point out the important areas. Here we're importing the, uh, the uh, Spark ML lib or machine learning library. So this is what I leverage as a data scientist to You're actually write open things. source algorithms. Exactly, in this case. exactly. And in this case, I also want to uh, utilize a linear regression as part of that. So I'm pulling linear regression out of the machine learning library. Here, our data scientist is adding in the NOAA weather, and then ultimately. Uh, our data scientists can make some sp on the spot kind of evaluation of uh, uh, how that data actually yeah. correlates. So we can see demand against temperature, demand against precipitation, demand against day of the week. And ultimately when the data scientist is, is satisfied that this model is ready, it's actually saved. And it's just saved as a model, not data. It's a model that I can throw over the, the fence to yep. our operational users by just very quickly publishing that out and making okay. it available as a drag and drop asset. So let me go back into now, out of the eyes of the data scientist, back into the eyes of the knowledge worker. And I'm back in the data discovery tool. And this is the algorithm that we just published moments ago. And I'm sure you'll agree, it's a lot easier for a layperson to work with a simple drag and drop bit of AI than uh, to have to work with the code. So all the code is behind this, and now I can simply apply my own data very easily. 
So I'll call this prediction, and we'll execute. So it's running right over there and in the cloud. So what, and again, just that fast, we get back our predicted values. So let's take a look at that. Here we have our weather data and our utilization data, and there's our prediction. So in similar fashion to how we did earlier, we can very quickly push this out yeah. right back to our dashboard. And, and I hope we can visualize that. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact. We can. <laughs> we can. And that's the beauty of it, democratization of AI. Yeah. So we've been able now to look at this dramatic improvement. you can see quite a difference because the dark blue line is without the NOAA data. That's correct? right. And applying uh, the, the, the NOAA data that is about a 15% improvement. Dramatic. 15% exactly. improvement uh, in um, expected demand. That's Correct. right. Yep. So the accuracy is that much more fine tuned. And that's the key part is that we can combine multiple disparate data yep. sources from and apply different algorithms in a single visualization. And if I'm deploying 1,000 cars in this example, yeah. um, I uh, I, I'm either 150 short or 150 15. long. That's right? a big difference. And that's a big, and big that's difference. A big difference, and it can be a great expense to our business. Yeah. So this extra efficiency and accuracy is a huge yeah. benefit. So that, those were linear regressions and triple exponential uh, smoothing. That those is were correct. The, that was the data and the algorithm that gave us this insight of 15% better for, uh, forecasting. That's right, and it was just a drag and drop affair. Yeah. You have a third scenario. I do. So we also utilize uh, Magellan for fleet maintenance, predictive fleet maintenance. So through the eyes of fleet operations, we, we can actually make a determination on uh, the need for maintenance for our cars. So in this case, we're utilizing the Covacent IoT platform. And those, uh, uh, there are edge devices in every one of our cars that are streaming onboard diagnostics. So we're watching things like engine temperature, tire pressure, fluid levels. And we're actually using that historic as well as real-time information to understand the likelihood or propensity for a breakdown. And we're using a random forest algorithm in this particular case. So how do we bubble that up into the dashboard for our fleet manager? Well, it's very simple, easy to see in this particular case. We can see the probable cause in our top uh, several cars that are in danger okay. of uh, having a maintenance problem. But more importantly, again, we utilize the map. We can see all of the cars in transit. Anything that starts to get in danger of being a maintenance issue will automatically flash red. And when we take a look at that, we can see the customer who's driving it, see where the ride began, see where it's at now, how long it's been, but more importantly, there's that failure prediction rate. So that's telling our fleet operations manager, we should proactively pull this out of service just for a little while, fix it, before it breaks down and come, goes out of service altogether. So how do you get some action out of this insight? Well, if, you know, when we extrapolate, because as Mark said, Magellan is going to tie in with the entire EIM product stack, so we can have this launch a process. We can have this proactively order parts through the business network. So there's a lot of ways in which there's a cohesiveness with the, all, the entirety of the EIM platform with Magellan in the middle. So, Mark, yes. Mark and um, uh, Micah, yeah. thank you very much. That's Magellan. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.